Okay, boys. I, you know, everybody talks about family, blah, 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 blah. Something that I really hold dear to my heart and not everybody can talk about this is my husband and I met ourselves in our first year of high school. So we have been together for a long time. I thought you guys would be interested in seeing a picture of us on, on, on my old girlfriend's couch in Taffield, Connecticut, where I was from. And then these happen to be our upper school pictures from our high school year. I thought we would enjoy that. That was me back in my third year of high school. Do we love the glasses? They also have the little um, initials on the bottom, if anyone nice. remembers the late 70s like that, okay? So here we go. We go, we graduate high school. We go to college. My husband's uh, dad dies and he decides that he wants to join the army. Off he goes and we get married. Um, back then, I, I, I finished my first degree with a degree in communications because there was not even computer science yet, okay? So off we go to Germany. He was in New Jersey for a little while at Fort Dix. And then we went off to the 1st Infantry Division forward. And the reason I bring this screen up now is with everything that's going on in the world right now, this is what Germany looked like when my husband and I were there in the early 80s. You see the American flags, the one on the bottom there next to Stil uh, Stetkov and Zenlendorf, that's actually where we were stationed in Gerpigen and Swabish Gabun. My husband was the um, training instructor for the 1st Infantry Division forward. Wow. I was actually working for BDM International, which was a company that was studying cohort to see if it was feasible to the government. So I was actually a data transcriber back then using, you know, ancient modems and uh, basically German telephone, which was just absolutely horrible. But, you know, if you look at it in the day and age of what we're going on now with everything that's going on in Ukraine, you can see how close we were to West German, uh, excuse me, East Germany. The wall was still up at the time when we were there. My mm -hmm. husband had to go to um, training, training on the Czech border because that's what we were uh, worried about. And I was actually there when Chernobyl uh, went up. Oh, wow. I was actually in Northern Germany at the time. I was pregnant with my second son and I couldn't go outside. I was at one of those army wives things. Oh my God. And I could not go outside because I was pregnant at the time and did not want to breathe any of that stuff. Just some of the stuff that we went through. We also lived on the economy. Two of my girlfriends over there were German. We did not live in army housing. I spoke real gutter German with a heck of a New England accent um, and um, still remember some of it to this day. But uh, yeah, it was all in all a really great time for us. Um, the mark was 345 to one at the time, which if anybody knows what that means, you know, you could go out to dinner, four course meal for like 20 bucks. It was super cheap over there at the time. And then we left. We wanted to go to um, Ireland, obtain proving grounds. My husband wanted to be an AIT instructor. I wanted to continue working for BDM International, but that didn't happen. They sent us to the 10th Mountain Division and they said, bring your family. We're ready for you. Mother. Really? Yeah, no, they were. That's no joke. That is. They I mean, were not ready for us. Big Red One is a pretty intense outfit, but the 10th Mountain, whoa. Yeah, my husband was in the Big Red One before and when after he got done being the Big Red One, then he went to be part of the original buildup to, again, of the activation of the 10th Mountain Division. Kind of why, you know, my heart is there with the, and soul with this. We were some of the folks that lived in some of the first 801 housing. 801 housing, for folks that don't know what that is, that was a project where the government was building housing out in communities, putting army families in communities, sending kids to schools, using hospitals, so they didn't have to build these facilities on Fort Drum. Basically, till this day, there's a huge relationship between Fort Drum and Watertown in the surrounding area, schools, hospitals, everything like that. They have never built those facilities on Fort Drum. This just kind of gives you a snapshot of me. They're my kids. I have two boys. My oldest is now 37. He lives in Shamo. He also went in the military right after high school, like his dad. Um, well, my husband was after college, but after high school for my son, he was a military policeman, got hurt in Guantanamo Bay. He's a disabled vet. He has now found his way to be a charter, uh, charter captain and has his own uh, charter, uh, like a charter service on Lake Ontario. My youngest son works down here in Tampa in the restaurant business. And we have just spent three glorious months with him. Wow, that's a lot of family time. He's the one with the bar in the in the in the wine in front of him. He's a sommelier and an event planner. Um, moving on, 
I'd like to, I like to throw this out because in 2009, in between coming back in 1987 and 2009, when I went to work for the Johnsons, I had already met my present boss now, Paul Barton, and we'll get to that. But I went to work for the Watertown Daily Times in 2009, and back then they were still calling it data processing. Just throwing that out there for anybody that's in the IT. Now. <laughs> I have been in IT my whole life. I originally, like I said, had gone to school for communications. They didn't even have computer science then. When I was over in Germany, I went back to the University of Maryland, got some more credits, went back to the University of Connecticut and got my degree in computer science, but um, just wanted everyone to know that we were still referring it to data processing in 2009. Um, and that kind of brings me up to 2017, where some of you have heard, um, I was lucky enough to quote unquote reinvent myself. In 2017, I was let go from the Johnson Newspaper Corporation. I was their CIO. And I basically went to work for West Telcom, but that's when I said, sorry guys, I, you're the armpit of IT. I love you to death, but I have absolutely no interest in operational IT anymore, but I'll market business development and all sorts of things like that. So basically let's talk about what I do now. What I do now for West Telcom is I, the director of business development, I'm also building their partner channel. And for those of you that aren't really that familiar with West Telcom, they are basically a CLEC that is owned by an ILEC, which is basically an, either a local um, internet uh, telephone exchange or a centralized telephone exchange, depending on the size of the area. That's what uh, CLEC means. Um, and we provide internet and um, phone service and have been doing it since um, the early 90s in, in Watertown. In Watertown, I think people have heard me say this, we are actually the original dial-up company. We are down in the State Tower Building in Syracuse. We have the whole bottom floor. That is our co-location and our carrier neutral data center in Syracuse, New York, which gives us a lot of ties out all over the world. Um, we acquired TO in 2020. That was part of when we lost our designation as a rural carrier. So we needed to do something. So we acquired TIA, which gave us another, uh, basically another UCAS platform, which is unified communication platform. Um, we have about 65 employees now all over the United States with um, probably a little over, probably closer to like 10,000 customers by now. Uh, we do have six regional offices now. We do have offices in Texas and Washington when we were only in New York before. We do focus on mission critical and only businesses. We do not provide residential service. That is only done by our parent company, Shazy Westport Telephone. Um, this just gives you a kind of a broad range of what we, what we do as far as an ISP, which is an internet service provider, for you guys that don't know what that is. UCAS is Unified Communications, which is basically hosted voice in the cloud. We also offer an on-premise or a hybrid situation for that. And we are also one of the few internet service providers right. that has a direct connectivity to the Microsoft uh, Teams routing as we are a MetaSwitch shop too. So we are able to have and offer that product suite also with our stuff. We also do internet SD-WAN. Um, we do a lot of content delivery for folks like DirecTV and um, uh, DISH network, Spectrum, things like that, all travel and transverse our network. And then of course we do all sorts of traditional stuff like just regular telephone, uh, dedicated internet access, broadband internet, co-location and web hosting. And this is just some of our product line. We do um, uh, basically manufacture our own phones now over in our Washington office that was part of the TO acquisition. This here is just kind of like a really kind of cutesy little map I put together for a basically for an audience like this. So it kind of gives you an idea of how we connect across anything that is really not a, a solid line means that it either is it's connecting at either level level three or level four. I'm, and I know that most folks in this, in this meeting here don't understand the level of connectivity when it comes to computer and things like that. But it basically just shows that in this day and age as an, an internet service provider, you don't have to have a fiber network on the ground to be able to service all over the United States. And that's basically what, what this says here. We have national wholesale and um, network interfaces. That's what's NNI are so that we can basically provide service anywhere in the United States because of our robust switching and diverse network that we have. Um, 
And that's basically what we do. You can see on here too, that we have direct uh, connectivity in three different locations for um, internet exchanges, means direct connectivity to all the clouds. And you also notice that everything is ringed because nothing ever goes down. We will, everything is redundant and that's basically how we keep our service up and be able to provide the mission critical that we do. Um, in the back end, we're always monitoring. This is something that you know folks like Lisa Atkinson and, and the other folks in the cyber area are always talking about. As an ISP, we cannot go into someone's internal network. That's not something that we do. We're actually providing the transport for folks, but we are always monitoring our customer wide area networks, our internet backbone, our network QoS, which is quality of service. And, and that sort of thing, and any threats and traffic load that's going on on our network. If you look over to the right and you see that green with the, with the West Telecom in the middle, that's what we call our traffic map. That's up in our NOC, our 24-7, 365 NOC. It's up at all times. Anytime that goes, anything that's not green, we know that we need to be doing some load, uh, load balancing and, and we automatically, the, the network starts to load balance things that are going across it. We also are very proud of a homegrown mission critical app that we have. And we are able, it's basically our customer portal and how that we uh, basically put out notifications to our, to our customers, but they can also place tickets and do ticket management through it. Again, it's homegrown, all built by all of our big brains in the back office of our folks. Um, and, and that's just something that we're very proud of. Um, I now really, because we've taken on TO and we've gone national, You've heard it many times. I'm kind of like the tech evangelist for West Telcom. I'm really just out there talking about West Telcom, lifting and shifting this big fish that we are out of this little pond we're in. And now we realize we're just this baby little fish in this huge pond. It's really like an ocean. But anyway, um, I'm running the partner program. So I'm someone who's looking for partners, agents, wholesale partners, or even telco partners. So, I mean, I speak on a given week any from people like Zayo, which is a huge um, fiber, basically a fiber provider and mostly in Texas and things like that. Someone like Fred would be um, familiar with them. Just speaking to just a small agent who's starting his own business and he really talks to people about business processes and stuff like that. But he's someone else that has the right people in the room. We just wanna to talk to people and begin to give our services to people that are everywhere. Um, and basically in summary, uh, West Telecom's been around a long time. We're focused on giving white glove delivery design and support. We have built ourselves a mission critical network and it's very capable with many different solutions. We've been successful in multiple vertical markets and we have great experience with designing and delivering complex solutions. And I think the most important thing and, and I strive for this immensely is um, anyone that I deal with as a partner and or a customer, they're part of our family, they're part of our company. I think that um, that's why I fold so well with B50 because it's not about the sale, it's about the relationship. And I think that's where I can probably just about leave it right there. Mm -hmm.